Welcome to tutorial 3, exploring the GPSX Influent Advisor tool. The goal of this video is to investigate the Influent Advisor tool in its use in characterizing influent data prior to performing a plant calibration. The first step is to create a new plant layout and save it under an appropriate name. For this demonstration, we will use the Mantis 2 library. Please select it from the available list if not already selected. Within the Influent group of the process table, drag an Influent object onto the drawing board, and then switch into Simulation mode. Create new scenario and name the Influent. This will allow us to make changes to the Influent composition values. To open the Influent Advisor, right-click on the model object and go to Composition, Influent Characterization. This window is divided into three sections. The values in the left-hand column are available for users to adjust, while the State Variables and Composite Variable sections display the calculated values based on the user inputs. In this tutorial, we have been provided a set of average Influent data for our characterization. From the values that we were provided, only three of them, being the total COD, ammonia nitrogen, and total TKN, are available to be inputted in the user section of the Influent Advisor. Go ahead and input these values. Since we are making changes within a scenario, the values that we are changing turn green. As we make changes to the values in the left-hand column, composite variable values in the rightmost column are changing. Notice that these values are different than the ones that we were provided. This indicates that some of the default settings, either composition data or stoichiometric fractions, are incorrect, resulting in an inconsistency. We will now explore the ability of the Influent Advisor to remove these discrepancies. Find the VSS variable in the composite variables column and click on the value. The VSS row will become highlighted, and if you scroll up and down the page, you will also notice that several other rows have been highlighted in a light purple color. These highlighted sections are the variables that are used to calculate the VSS value. Scroll down to the bottom of the Influent Advisor page, and you will see the actual formula used in GPSX to calculate the value clicked on, in this case the VSS. Now let's adjust the influent parameters to reconcile the model predictions with the actual measured values. From the data provided, we have values for VSS and TSS. This allows us to calculate the VSS to TSS ratio. Enter this value under the influent fraction subheading. Let's look at the effect of this adjustment. It appears that this change causes the model predictions to move even further away from the actual values, indicating that further changes will be required. With VSS selected by clicking on the highlighted cells, you should be able to determine that VSS is a function of particulate organic compounds such as Xi, the particulate inert material, Xu, the unbiodegradable cell products, and Xs, the slowly biodegradable substrate. The VSS is lower than our target, meaning that we must distribute more of the influent COD to the particulate forms and less to the soluble forms. Within the organic fraction subheading, we will make changes and attempt to increase the concentration of particulate COD. Set the soluble inert fraction of total COD to 0. 0, 02. Set the readily biodegradable fraction of total COD to 0 0.15 and set the colloidal fraction of solely biodegradable COD to 0 0.05. These changes result in movement of more COD into the form XS, which results in increases to VSS and TSS. Lastly, we will make changes to adjust the filter TKN value in the composite variables column. Click on the values in the formula to determine which input parameter should be adjusted. 
Let's further adjust the colloidal fraction of slowly biodegradable COD and the ammonium fraction of soluble TKN. Let's look at how these changes affect the composite variables. Our model results are becoming quite close to the actual data. We will just make a few more slight changes. Here is a possible solution to allow for matching to the actual influent data. When performing a model calibration, you may need to adjust these values further to match specific process parameters. For instance, determining accurate values for Xi and Xs are key for matching the MLSS concentration and amount of sludge production. During a whole plant model calibration, the goal is to match not only the influent data, but also the plant performance at various points throughout the layout. We will now explore how the influent advisor warns against improperly characterized influent. Change the total TKN value to 15 and hit enter. You will notice that some of the state and composite variables have been highlighted in red. This indicates a negative concentration, which sometimes can be from some unusual or poorly characterized data. Negative influent concentrations can cause mass balance errors and conversions problems, so these values must be addressed before proceeding with a simulation. Note that if you attempt to accept the characterization, a window will pop up to warn you that the input values have resulted in negative state or composite variables. With the completion of this tutorial, you should now be familiar with how to use the Influent Advisor tool to characterize the influence of your model.